Okay, so now we're ready to start with the uh, basic formal definitions of homology theory. Um, so uh, X be a topological space. Uh, and uh, let's recall uh, delta K, the K simplex. So that's the set of points X zero to X K in R of the K plus one. Uh, uh, where all these uh, uh, all these coordinates x i are non-negative, and the sum of the coordinates is equal to one. Okay, so that was our basic k simplex we discussed before, uh, <coughs> and uh, by a singular k simplex, uh, in x uh, is uh, just a continuous map. Let's say uh, u from this uh, k simplex uh, into x. <coughs> okay. <coughs> um, uh, so, uh, and uh, we write uh, skx uh, is just a set of single k simplices. Uh, <coughs> okay. Um, and. Uh, Okay, so this delta k is only defined when k is non-negative. It's convenient to define skx to be empty when k is negative. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and so, so what does, what does this mean? So, uh, um, yeah, well, what's s naught x? Um, uh, s naught x uh, is x. Um, well, that's just because, you know, what's delta zero? That's just, uh, uh, delta zero is a single point. Uh, it just consists of the, same, the number one. Um, uh, so, uh, so to give a continuous map from delta zero to x, uh, uh, Yeah, so you just have to say what will one go to? Uh, the image of one, that's just a point in x, right? So uh, you give a, a continuous map from uh, delta zero to x, it's just the same as you give a point of x, uh, so s zero x is essentially the same as x. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and then uh, what about delta one? Uh, well, delta one is, uh, um, is you know, we, we can identify it with uh, the unit interval zero one. Um, Okay, so a point, uh, point in delta 1 has a form 1 minus t, t for some uh, t in the unit interval, uh, which just corresponds to t. So we, we think uh, we can think of the uh, one simplex as just a unit interval like so. Um, so s1x is essentially the set of paths in x. Mm -hmm. yeah, so a zero simplex is just a point, a one simplex is just a path. And what's a two simplex? Well, you might sort of say a two simplex. I mean, delta two is just a triangle, so you can say a two simplex is like a triangle in X. Of course, that's uh, kind of a little bit misleading because you know you've got a continuous map from the triangle to X. You know, it can be a kind of kind of rather strange continuous map. It doesn't need to be injective. The image of delta two doesn't need to. You know, it doesn't always look anything like a triangle. Uh, but uh, yeah, still, in some sense, S two X is the set of triangles in X. Okay, so let's have some pictures. I mean, here you could have a, a space X could be like this, maybe with you know, some bits cut out. So these uh, shaded bits, these aren't part of our space. Uh, X is kind of everything else. Uh, <coughs> and uh, then we can maybe have some... Uh, uh, <coughs> let's have some points, call them U0 and U1, say, here. Um, that and then uh, over here, v0, v1, v2, giving a uh, triangle over here. Uh, and then maybe down here, we've got uh, something that's more or less a triangle but curved. <coughs> 
Okay, so there is kind of a uh, an extra definition implicit in here, which uh, uh, let's uh, let's introduce this. Um, okay, so uh, uh, so I suppose we've got some points in R n. Uh, then we define uh, map pointy bracket a zero up to a k. Uh, from the k simplex to Rn just by uh, to tell you what's the value uh, at a point uh, t in the in, in the simplex. So I just do t naught a naught, just a kind of obvious linear combination of those things there. Um, <clears throat> So the image of this map you know, is just the, the simplex uh, with vertices a0 up to ak. Okay. So, yeah. <coughs> um, <coughs> so, so in this picture over here, if we do pointy bracket u0, u1, uh, the image of that is just this line segment. Uh, if we do pointy bracket v0, v1, v2, the image of that is this triangle here. Okay. Um, uh, um. Okay, so that's a, a linear simplex in R. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so if we look over at this uh, 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 this example over here, so uh, uh, yeah, we've got uh, uh, v zero, v one, v two. Okay, so that's uh, a, a linear two simplex. Okay, so linear two simplex in X. Um, uh, uh, P, you know, you've got uh, this map. This little picture here is supposed to indicate a, a map, a, 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 a continuous but non-linear map P from the triangle into X. Uh, so P that is another element of S two X, but it's a non-linear element. Uh, um, uh, if we do the u zero u one, uh, that's in s two of our s two of the plane, right? Uh, um, but it's not in s two x. Uh, the endpoints lie in x, but the uh, full simplex doesn't. So this doesn't count as an element of s two x. Okay? So those are, uh, and then uh, yeah, the uh, <coughs> um, yeah, the individual points u zero u one. Uh, v0, v1, v2, each of those, they're, a point, they're all points in x, and so they, uh, in particular they count as elements of the s0x, because s0x is essentially just the same as x. And then, uh, then we've got some linear one simplices, say, from v0 to v1 and so on. Next, uh, for any set p, uh, I'm going to define the so-called free abelian group. So this is Z curly brackets P. Free, uh, free, free abelian group on P. Uh, so this is the set of uh, formal Z linear combinations. Of elements of P. <laughs> um, in other words, this is kind of expressions uh, like n1 p1 up to uh, nr pr. Uh, uh, the coefficients ni are integers, and the uh, <coughs> and the uh, elements pi those are elements of, uh, of your original set P. Uh, <coughs> okay, and uh, yeah, we just made a fairly obvious way in which we can manipulate these things. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, basic case, I mean, P could be finite. I mean, in fact, in most cases that we're going to be interested in, P is not going to be finite, but let's just think about the case where P is finite. So where P happens to be, uh, we can just list the whole element, whole list of elements, all, all the elements of P, like so, P0 up to PM. Um, 
uh, then uh, <coughs> then we have an isomorphism uh, from Z to the M to this uh, free abelian group. Uh, alpha, uh, so alpha of uh, if, you, if there's only finitely any elements to, to to take care of, then uh, you know you just kind of include them all in the uh, in your sum with appropriate coefficients, uh, zeros if necessary, and so you just get uh, you see that the free abelian group is uh, isomorphic. Uh, to the uh, just Z to the M. Okay. But uh, yeah, as I say, we're mostly going to be interested in cases uh, where our P is going to be infinite. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, and, and in fact, yeah, the key case is like this um, uh, that uh, CKX uh, is the free abelian group on uh, SKX. Um, So the word that's used, a uh, singular k-chain. Okay, so remember SKX, that was the set of, uh, of uh, singular k-simplices, in other words, the set of all possible maps uh, from the k-simplex, all possible continuous maps from the k-simplex into x. And, yeah, and C, so CKX is just uh, the set of formal linear combinations of these things. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, we'll have some examples of that in just a second. Uh, <coughs> uh, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, so remember the... Uh, uh, elements of SKX are called singular, uh, singular syntheses. A singular K chain is just a, f a linear combination of, uh, of these uh, singular syntheses. And so your CKX, that's the uh, group of singular K chains. Okay, so going back to these pictures here, for example, you know, uh, we could have uh, uh, for a, a singular naught chain, and uh, we could like, you know, 3W naught minus 7U1 plus 56 uh, V1. So that's a linear combination of points in our space X. Uh, so this counts as an element of the, uh, the chain group C0X. Uh, if we want some one simple Cs, uh, we could do uh, maybe something like uh, uh, so V0, pointy bracket V0, V1. That's a linear one simplex going from V0 to V1. And then uh, let's, go, let's go around this triangle. We add in sort of V1, V2, plus V2 to V0. Okay, so that's a, just a, a sum of all the edges around this triangle here. So this counts as an element of C1x. <coughs> and uh, yeah. <coughs> and if we want elements of C2x, you know, we can have uh, uh, 13 times this linear one. Minus seven times p, so p is this uh, nonlinear map giving a, uh, from the two simplex into x. Uh, so here we've got to, uh, thirteen times uh, thirteen copies of this one and minus seven copies of that one. Uh, that counts as an element of c two x. Okay, so uh, <coughs> um, this is uh, <coughs> this is one of the key ingredients. Uh, um, so the next problem. Uh, define the boundary uh, okay. so if we look at this uh, uh, this linear two simplex here I mean it's kind of clear more or less what the what we should mean by the boundary of this the uh, boundary of this should consist of the three edges of this triangle uh, which uh, again, those are going to be linear simplices. The boundary of P, again, it's uh, more or less clear that the boundary of this should consist of uh, you know, just the three edges uh, in some, you know, combined in some way uh, <coughs> all around that P. But it turns out that yeah, there's going to be uh, it's going to take a little bit of work to uh, to give a proper formal definition of the boundary of a K chain as a K minus one chain, and uh, uh, yeah, and that's what we'll do in the next video.